Five, four, three, two, one. Hi, tribe. I'm Versavia. And I'm Evelyn. And you're listening to Objectively Typed, the podcast where we explore the objective personality system. Today, we are going to be talking about alphaness, what that means, and um, all the uh, our thoughts and things around it. So as far as alphaness itself, first, I guess we want to disclaimer or a little disclaimer. preface here yep. that um, alphaness has a lot of connotations or alpha in general has a lot of connotations out there unfortunately. Uh, Some of them are negative. And so we wanted to be clear as to what we mean or, and especially what Dave and Shannon talk about when they talk about alpha. Yeah. Yeah. So, So, yeah. Do you want to, I can, I can at least, because I had written down Dave's um, definition of alpha that he shared in one of his YouTube videos. And that was alpha, well, alpha state, which might be different from alpha, from an alpha person. So maybe we should also talk a little bit about that, like differentiating operating in an alpha state versus being an alpha. But uh, he at least described the alpha state. And, and also listeners, I've got a little bit of a scratch in my throat. So if you hear that today, just, I just want to get that out of the way. I am aware of it. Uh, it's allergy season here, and I think it's either allergies or the beginning of a cold. Anyways, <laughs> the alpha state is when all of your parts are working together towards a common goal. That's the way he defined it in one of his, I think it was like ESFJ alpha state or one of those videos. In one of them, yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, like, so alpha, the, the word itself has a lot of negative connotation and once upon a time, it meant, so when you had like uh, a, 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 a social animal, like a pack of wolves or something like right. that, right? right? Whoever the lead of the pack is, it was the alpha. Right. Um, and then that kind of took on this connotation in the pickup, com- pickup artists and like incels and all these other communities. And it is kind of like morphed into a negative connotation because of all these guys beating their chests saying that they're yeah. alphas or whatever. Yeah. It's but like an alpha gorilla thing. About. No. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. uh, that's like, so if, if when you think of alpha, that's what you think, take that and just set it aside. Right. And then what we're talking about, at least with alpha state, was the definition, the beautiful definition that Elvin just gave. Could you read it again? Sure. It's when all of your parts are working together towards a common goal. And by parts, I take it to mean your functions, essentially. Yeah, um, I think all the, yeah. all the various parts of OPS. Yeah, so including your animals and all that stuff, too. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Um, so I think that that brings up an interesting question of, like, so uh, that's alpha, alpha state. <laughs> <laughs> what is an alpha who is an alpha i know we talked about it a little bit in in our definitions episode yeah, yeah i think we did one of them <laughs> yeah um, yeah i think what do you think I, well to me um an alpha is a person who is sort of i'll say in the alpha state more often or they like they live in that they're they're able to pull on all of their parts at will and easily also that's the other aspect of it because i think like all of us are able to do are able to pull on our sort of inferior functions from time to time but an alpha is a person who's operating um at that state all the time Uh, 24 seven. And also I would say probably seeing some results in the real world. Although I'd love to get into that a little bit too, whether or not uh, I'll say material gains are necessarily the mark of an alpha. Cause I, I think just from watching Dave and Shannon, I, it feels like that is something that they do attached to alpha. So if a person like, like Gary V, he's an example of a guy who super successful in business. I don't even know what he did like before. (laughs) <laughs> and and honestly, like I had never heard of the guy. I don't even really know what he does now. I just know he makes tons of money doing whatever it is that he does. <laughs> um, yeah. And, and so I know that people on to his podcast. Yeah. And so I know that like, there is an aspect of that that I hear of like, you know, if you are successful materialistically, like in, in sort of the Western view of like success, I think they attribute that to alpha. I'm not sure that I personally do. Myself. I think that's an interesting question. Um, maybe we yeah. can circle back around to it after we talk about hero's journey a little bit. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, I jotted that down. I think that's a, that's a really interesting question. Um, I think part of my definition of alphaness is not only, I mean, everything that you said, I agree with that, like being right. able to um, 
call upon any part of your functions or parts, even the parts that you don't have, might not have in your stack um, as the situation demands it. Right. Yeah, I guess all eight functions. That's true. Because he, he did say all of your parts, but you're right that really you need to be able to pull on the parts that, like I'd need to pull on FE, right, to be truly alpha. Yeah, um, yeah, that kind of like, even if it's not in your stack, um, if that's what is the best tool for the job, then you're able to access it. Right, easily, yeah. I also think another part of it is also the, so for example, um, I'll, 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 I'll use myself as an example. EP, and I have that demon NI, I can pull up my NI all day long, I can plan, I can narrow down, I can find the thread, but I still have my EP freakouts. And I think mm-hmm. that's, um, that, that's and I think point. the hero's journey kind of talks about this when we get there, we'll talk about it too, um, that like, you're not letting your fear push you away. Yeah. You're, not, you're not pushing away on the fear, you're running towards it. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Whatever your fears are or the discomfort or whatever those things are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, yes. <laughs> Sorry, I was thinking about the hero's journey. Like my mind went to the hero's journey. <laughs> so then let, let's jump into it. Um, sure, sure. What is it? <laughs> yeah, so the hero's journey is one of these things that like I've been aware of for a long time. You see it a lot in movies and it's like, I don't know. I, I've always heard of it as a narrative device, but I think Dave and Shannon are helping me realize that it's not just a narrative device. It's it's sort of a map of um, what has historically been a, a journey of, I don't know if I want to say enlightenment. Okay. Well, growth, enlightenment, like it, it, it's a path. It's a path that many have trod before us, or at least narratively speaking in an archetypical fashion, in a symbolic fashion, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and so do you want me to just run through the steps or? or yeah, sure. Or, yeah. Okay. Let, let, yeah, let's so, start with that sensory. Yeah. So there, and there's, I mean, you can, you can Google this. There's a lot of different sort of ways. And I think what I'll probably do is like, what I like to do um, <laughs> whenever I talk about the hero's journey is bring in a, a fictional story because it usually helps people. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, and so like, so a couple weeks ago, about a month ago, I did a workout um, as a trainer, I was called in to do a sub and I did the hero's journey as a workout. And like every step of the way, I like gave a little like example from, from star Wars. Um, Oh yeah. 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 Okay. So So, yeah. So like, so like star Wars, the matrix, those are good ones. So you start off with the status quo or like living in the, in the town. So like, I'm going to use star Wars. It's probably the one that's most familiar to me. You know, this is, um, Luke Skywalker, you know, he lives on Tatooine and it's just like simple, you know, he's a moisture farmer, status quo. Uh, Eventually there's a call to adventure. Um, There's usually something that, that calls to the hero. Um, In the case of Star Wars is a little bit different in that the, I'll say the audience gets the call because they know that the audience knows that Princess Leia needs help. Um, actually, I think narratively Luke doesn't, but it's still, it's a call to adventure that the hero doesn't necessarily get at first. Um, then you go into assistance, um, which is actually the way I would almost put this whole beginning part is the thrust into adventure in general. Um, so he starts at home, everything's, everything's comfortable, and then eventually something pushes him out. And so the way I always say it is, you know, Uncle Owen and Aunt Baru had to die. They had to die. Yeah. <laughs> so they die. He no longer has anything at home, right? I think that's, yeah. um, uh, that's definitely in, in the videos on the Dave Superpowers channels. One of the, uh, there's, a, there's a whole series on the hero's journey. There's nine videos all together. Yeah, um, one thing that Dave very often talks about is that we're the tantruming child, right? Mm-hmm. In the beginning when we're in that status quo and that um, there is some kind of event precipitating event where it does demarcate this point of no return yeah you have to you have to yeah. leave like you can't go back to the status quo like the, because the movie it's not there that, anymore yeah yeah the movie yes. that i was thinking of when you were talking that's like fresh in my mind right now is into the spider verse <laughs> so oh, right. i don't know if this is like spoilers because this movie is i haven't seen it you. yet oh okay then maybe i won't go there but <laughs> let's just say it follows the hero's journey it, there's a moment like that where it's like he can't go back he can't go back to the way things were well, um, I mean, with, with Luke, as you were just saying, you know, when his aunt and uncle die, um, when you look at uh, Matrix, you know, when, um, when, 
when they first start targeting Neo, when you look at um, Thor, it's when his uh, father pushes him out and sends him to Earth. Like, mm-hmm. there's, this is a story that's told over and over and yeah. over again. Right. Uh, so there, right. there's, like, lots of things. I mean, if we look at our own lives, I'm sure it's happened for us as well. Like, you know, for you, like, probably losing your family. That was a point of yeah. no return, right? right? You right. had to adjust to the new status quo. You had to somehow you because to. you couldn't turn that back exactly you can't go back to town right for whatever reason um yeah yeah in some movies the home planet gets destroyed or something right um and so yeah so that's the departure and and kind of the thrust to into adventure um is the way i've also seen it called and so the the hero goes out um out of the town out into the world and they have trials and tribulations and this is often where the mentor comes into play they you know like with neo there's morpheus uh with luke there's obi-wan kenobi of like this mentor who kind of shows them the ropes and the new world um and this is kind of the point in the story where the hero is still like they're out of the status quo they're out of the town they're still they're a not, tantruming child yeah they're still kind yeah. of a tantruming child they're not fully like realized they're not like a fully realized thing um, yeah. and so and so yes yeah, so you have the mentor and then eventually and you can stop me at any well you, yeah jump in <laughs> as you, um, like well you are anyway <laughs> no but um it's there true. comes a point where the mentor dies usually like or leaves actually it's so funny i haven't seen the matrix in a while morpheus doesn't die though right he doesn't die he, he almost dies okay this is why I like Star Wars because Obi Wan Kenobi dies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like Obi Wan is is gone, and so you have to well, lose the also, mentor. Yeah, like so we're talking about right now uh, the hero's journey in, in the narrative sense, right? Yes. But when yeah. applied to like real life, you know, <laughs> we're not gonna like Gandalf is not gonna magically appear right. in our lives. Like, right? It's gonna be no Dumbledore, no Morpheus, right. unfortunately. Right. Um, but actually, Gandalf is another example because he dies. <laughs> he does yeah, yeah. he dies yeah, he but falls then resur- resurrected dumbledore also yeah. dies like yeah. yeah yeah um but they're all like actual usually old white guys <laughs> <laughs> usually yeah. yeah yeah um yeah. but that's besides the point um right they're all actual people whereas right. in the real world we might not have access to people and well, so there's a lot of other ways of getting mentorship yeah well in the way that i look at it the at least the death of the mentor part of this is that so you had the status quo, you had your, your familiar life, then you start learning these new skills and things, but there comes a point where you can't rely on yeah. those mentors or those other things to solve your problems. Like somehow they need to go away also. Just like you had to leave home, somehow you also can no longer rely on that safety net. I, I think that's the way it ends up being is, you know, sometimes people get kicked out of their home or, you know, whatever, but it's like, you can't rely on the safety net anymore. So it's like right. the whole so thing first is your town here. and your whole world disappears. And right. then you have the safety net of this particular person or yeah. more likely in, re- in the real world is like access right. to information to be your guide, right? Yes, yeah. And then for whatever reason, you don't have access to that information or that inf- when you do have access to that information or that mentor is no longer able to answer the questions that you are asking. That you need, yeah. Right? Yes, exactly. It's no longer able to help you grow the skills that you're trying to grow. And right. you have to figure out how to do it without that mentor or without that resource. Yeah, yeah. And so that leads to what is called, like in some models or whatever, but like deathbed or the crisis or crushing defeat. Like this happens in all the movies. Like there comes a point where the hero like dies or they lose. You know, it's that first battle where it's like they've tried everything. They've left home. Their mentor's gone. And it's it. Sometimes, like, sometimes it yeah. literally dies. Like Harry literally dies. Yeah, Harry literally Chris. dies. Yeah, um, I, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And um, then, like, I'm. I'll be curious to see what happens with Endgame. But like, literally, half the world yeah. also died. Like, there, there is an element of yeah. that. But we all know that, like, part of their journey is going to be crushing oh. defeat. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's actually a good example too. Yeah. The Avengers right now are down in that crushing defeat. Area. Yeah. Yeah. They're in the deathbed part. They're in the of, of the of their story. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of the the bottom. And I think like and the other thing about real to bring reality in a little bit too is the interesting thing about about reality, your real life is you don't just go on a hero's journey from like step A to Z. There's like burp, 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 right. It's like yeah. 
it can happen many times and then you might get close to that crisis point but then not really and then go, kind of go back up and maybe you and somehow find another town to go back to maybe you know? if you do get to that crisis point it doesn't mean you're going to get through to the other side of that crisis point yeah in this yes. state of like you know revelation or whatever you might yeah. that crisis might defeat you and it you might. end up scurrying back to safety yep you know? yeah um, yeah, and a lot of yeah, a lot of people. That's what we do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think realistically, that's what we do is we go back to some sense of safety. Or there are some people who never, who never get out of the crisis point or the deathbed. Like they just give up on life. Um, and that's yeah, it. and and they let that defeat them, defeat truly them. defeat yeah. them. Yeah, and sadly, like I've seen that play out in like family members and stuff like that. Like I had an uncle that reached that low point in his life, and he he never got out, and then ended up they found him dead one day in this like halfway house like he had just life was oh like he had gone through divorce and all this stuff like he had been through the trials <laughs> and see but he never yeah he never yeah. got back and, and I, mean, I think yeah. um for people who are familiar with byron katie's story um she's somebody that dave and shannon typed in the class um she talks about how she had this moment of laying on the ground and a cockroach crawling roach, on her. The roach on her you know, foot, yeah. Literally like her own deathbed in that way. And that, and she was able to get through to the other side and see yeah. what, what is on the other side and, and come out, so quote unquote, victorious. Yeah, that's, um, a, that's a great example. I'm, I'm a big Byron Katie fan. I've read like three of her books or something like that. Really? Oh, I, I was not... <laughs> Uh, I was not she's as intrigued. Pretty, she is pretty <laughs> NF hippie. Oh, she's very <laughs> NF hippie. Um, yeah. But I think, Any, yeah. anyway, yeah. Anyway, so, so yeah, so that's deathbed. That's crisis. That's the crushing defeat. Yeah. Um, and so if you do get out of it, there's the rise to victory. There's the, you, you gain something. And the way that Dave talks about it in his series, his like nine part series, is that you have to basically integrate the darkness into you. A little bit um and so again i'm sorry a little part of your yeah. identity yeah so this might be a minor spoiler for spider-verse but i can't help it because i literally okay, just saw this movie <laughs> but i mean maybe you've seen the miles morales spider-man suit is black and like part of that is there comes a point in the movie where he accepts the darkness like and in in this case i i loved the imagery because it was very literal of like now it's like the darkness is part of him he becomes this like black suited figure and that's when he makes his rise back up because he's integrated that darkness into him um you know the matrix is the example i think dave uses where like neo dies and then he comes back and he like integrates the darkness into him and then from there yeah. he's now like able to dodge bullets and do the whole like i think batman is a great example especially batman. when we talk about um yeah uh, the newest batman dark knight yeah dark the dark knight, knight series you. Yeah. where he um, literally goes off and trains for years and years and years and accepts this darkness within him as a part of him right. and then uses that um, to go and help people. Although he also like literally also has like his, you know, day persona and night persona. Yeah. Yeah. But, but it's also for narrative effect. Right. 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 Yeah. But yeah, he goes to the Chinese prison and <laughs> the whole thing, you know, um, yeah, so that's when you start to come out of the crisis moment and you start the like the rise to victory or you and and you have this like that's the other interesting thing they talk about having a treasure or having a some sort of lesson that you've learned and I I don't know sometimes that seems to happen in the narrative version sometimes I don't know if it's as clear you know having like this boon but maybe the boon maybe the treasure is the integration of the darkness like you've learned like how to put these two things together um so what do you mean like uh, well well that's what i mean is like sometimes so in the hero's journey like narratively speaking there's often like a a point in the little like model mm -hmm. that says treasure <laughs> so like you've you found some sort of treasure oh okay and what i'm saying point. is i'm not always super yeah. clear on what that treasure is yeah yeah I, I think that's, so in, in the context of OPS, um, I think that's what Dave and Shannon refer to as that grow and give. It's the giving part, yeah, right? Yeah. So like you, you have grown 
yourself through this journey, through going through deathbed, through all the skills that you gained, the mentor, all of that. You've, yeah. you've gone through all of this and you've grown yourself and now you're in a place where you are able to give and now you right. live in service of others rather than in service yeah. of yourself because there is no self. Yeah. Your self yeah, has sure. gone through deathbed. And yeah. I think maybe in terms of the narrative um, part of it, that treasure, it might be the giving. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Or now you have something to give, whatever, you know, whatever that is. Um, yeah, yeah. 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 I just thought of right. another one. Luke Skywalker is another one who puts on a black suit. Like after, after he goes through all the oh, stuff, yeah. when he yeah. comes back with the, with the green lightsaber, he's wearing like all black. And his deathbed yeah. is when he loses his arm and finds out about yes. his father. Exactly. Yeah. You know, like that is his deathbed. That's yeah. where he's like hanging no. on by it. Yeah, yep. yeah, that no screaming. Literally falls. If you haven't yeah. watched Star Wars. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I love Star Spoiler Wars. warning. Oh. Darth Vader oh. is Luke's father. No. Um. <laughs> yeah, it's like the granddaddy of all spoilers. But yeah, also, so- go watch the movie. It's a great movie. It is, yeah. Um, so coming out of that is the return. So that's when the hero, so again, kind of back to Luke, when he comes back with that black suit on and he mm-hmm. comes to save his friends. It, the hero has to return. So he goes through this whole deathbed, usually alone. You know, he's lost his friends. He's lost everything. Um, deathbed happens. And that's usually alone for the hero. But then he goes back and he's got to help his friends because that's the whole point, right? I mean, you went through all this. It's not to just go off and be gone forever. It's to come back and do the return. And then, yeah, back to the grow and give part of it. Um, and I think that's one of the reasons why in the, when we look at like literature and movies and entertainment, when we look at the narrative of the hero's journey versus how we actually experience it in real life is that the stakes are always so high in these situations that yeah. you don't have a choice, but to endure it and make it to the other side of deathbed. You Whereas the stakes in our own day-to-day lives uh, don't feel as high. It's like, yeah well, it's okay. It's not a big deal if I don't do this. It's not a big deal if I don't do that. Like the world isn't going to end. Whereas for these characters, the world sometimes will literally (laughs) end. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's an excellent point. And I think that's where I've personally been a little bit stuck because it's like, I, sometimes I feel like I'm going through this, but to your point, like the stakes never feel like that high. Like, yeah, I don't know. Do I? Yeah. That's actually one thing that I've, uh, I learned about myself fairly young is, When I, so, because I know I will push the boundaries, push the boundaries, push the boundaries and not do whatever it is that I is expected of me until absolutely necessary. So instead of allowing myself to keep pushing the boundaries, I bring up the boundary closer. So like with my bike tour, (laughs) I set it up in such a way that I had no choice but to get my ass on a bike every single day. Right. Yeah. 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 To bring up the stakes. Yeah, oftentimes that's what we have to do in the real world is like do some sort of manufactured stakes, if you if you will, yeah. you know, like yeah. build them. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, so so yeah, and then another another thought or example, I guess, narratively speaking, is Lord of the Rings. You know, after yeah. um, after Frodo goes and drops the ring in Mordor, you know, he's got to return. And the one thing you often find with these movies is that the hero is changed by his experience. Like Frodo's not the same Hobbit that no, left no, he's, not. he's not i'm super nerdy guys <laughs> but like i would just sit here and talk about it but, but yeah like he's not the same and, he, and he's different from his other hobbit friends like mary and pippin who haven't been through this whole thing they they can't relate to him in the same way and that, i think that's an important aspect of this too is like your old relationships may and probably will change like you are no longer the same person that left hobbiton like you are now a new different altered yeah. person yeah and I, I think that's um you know Dave talks talked about this really well in his um in the series is that our our town whatever the status quo is when they notice us leaving on this journey or answering the call yeah. um sometimes there's going to be resistance there they're not going to want us to go because there is an element of like oh you think you're better than us what you think you can do this and the rest of us can't or whatever it is Uh, but if you do make it through that journey you do come back a different person yeah like you're not you're not going to be the same person you were before the way that you interact with the world view the world and interact with the exact same people exact same town yeah exactly yeah yeah so you have this new life um and this new existence and this new way of approaching the world but you do return and so a lot of times when you see the hero's journey 
like if you were to google it it's always almost always a circle it because is. you end up back where you started. at least somewhat started yeah yeah even if it's a little bit different because i mean like if your planet got destroyed maybe you can't go back to to that exact planet <laughs> yeah <laughs> um yeah. and i also think that an important part of this is that we also like we talk about alpha state, right? Where you're able to pull on any one of your parts. Yeah. Um, and, and alpha is not like just, oh, I went through the journey. I've achieved alpha-ness. Now I'm an alpha. Yeah. No, that's not, that's not true either. Like you don't have right. just one journey throughout your life. It's anytime, not anytime, but when, when there is a call that you are willing to answer it, that you are right. capable of answering it, that you're not yeah. running away from your fears and your discomfort. Instead, you're running towards it. Right, right, right. I think he says this, Dave does in one of his videos of like, you're going to go through it, go through the hero's journey a time and time again, right? It's like yeah. over and over kind of a thing. Or, you know, there's um, I, the idea in spiral dynamics where it's kind of a spiral also, like it's not necessarily yeah. a linear thing. I think that's the way it works out in actual reality. Yeah, I like that spiral image. Yeah. Um, that's very much how I think about it. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, so there's the hero's journey. In case you didn't know what we were talking about, now you do. <laughs> now you do. Um, so now more like, so what do you think about it? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Deep breath. Um, I think, well, first of all, I mean, it, it certainly works as a narrative uh, device because well, we yeah, keep of course. movies over and over and over, right? Uh, so yeah. Cool. That's uh, great. As old and as I think, narration itself. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm pretty sure Odysseus, yeah, is like the first one. Um, so, like, I think that it's definitely inspiring. Um, it definitely helps when, when you're feeling, especially when you're feeling, like, down and you're feeling like, I can never... I, I, I'm, I'm stuck in a place. It helps to sort of be told the hero's journey, if nothing else. Like, so I think that's why it has narrative value. That's why we keep coming back to it is because there's something inspiring. There's something uplifting about the story as a whole. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, in terms of like, do we, do we buy it as like actually life? I, I don't know. Like, I don't know. Uh, I've been kind of noodling over that too, because Sometimes I have these moments where I'm like, I've had, like, I've had moments that felt like deathbed. Like, this is it. This is it. I, I thought I've had moments just like Byron Katie of like on the floor with the roach going over my foot and the whole thing. <laughs> like, I thought I had that. But then like regular life just starts up again, you know, and, and it doesn't kind of to your point where it was like, because the stakes aren't literally like, the end gonna, of the world. Yeah, yeah, the end of the world it never, it, it, I, I don't know. Like, I, I can't tell if I'm like, like actually stuck or like where I'm at. I think I actually wrote Dave and Shannon. The, this suddenly, I just thought of this, like as we're recording. <laughs> but I remember like way back before I had my type uh, and this, this email probably helped them type me. I wrote them this email about like where I thought I was in the hero's journey. And I kind of went through like my whole like story and things like that. And so I feel like I've at least from a matrix point of view, like which is the pill, the red pill? I was getting I don't know. Whichever pill you take that's reality, I feel like I've had that. So I feel like I've had departure, you know. I'm no longer a townsfolk. But have I truly had deathbed? I don't know. Is that real? I don't know. I don't know either. I um I hear so I I think there's a couple of interesting things, right? So in a sensory way of speaking. So for example, Michelle Obama is somebody that they talk about as someone who is an alpha. Yeah. Or at least I do. I talk about her as an alpha. <laughs> well, I mean, she, she is, um, she, she's incredible in many, many ways. Um, but, and then say, say we, we take Michelle next to, um, like Byron Katie, right? Mm -hmm. So Byron Katie yeah. had a deathbed moment and she came out of it and now she is in the space of giving of <laughs> what she learned through her journey. Right. Um, can we say the same about Michelle? And to our knowledge, I don't know that that is true. Yeah, although right? I have not read her book. 
<laughs> well, okay, that's 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 true. But she doesn't talk about it. I'll say that. Like Byron Katie, like that story is pretty well known. Like she wrote about it in a book. She talks about it in a lot of interviews. Another example is um, oh Lord, Mel Robbins. You know, she tells the story about how like everything was broken because her restaurant business would failed, and so like she couldn't get out of bed, and so she had that moment of like five, four, three, two, one. I'm getting out of bed. And so that's similar kind of a thing. Um, Michelle certainly doesn't talk that. So if she's had it, it's, it's intensely private and she doesn't talk about it. Um, in some respects, we, we might be able to say that she has because, I mean, when your husband decides to become president, it's like everything has to change. Like you can't. Yeah, but... But it's uh, less discreet. I, I imagine a lot of her alphaness preceded when they yeah, ran, like bo- both Barack and Michelle, like they were alpha before he ran for president. Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah. But I, I think part of it is that like, it's, so for some people, I think it's a very, like when, when you look at their life, there is a moment, there is a precipitating mm-hmm. moment. There is this deathbed thing. And I would argue that I bet for Michelle, it wasn't anything specific Rather, it was a collection of moments throughout her life, especially during her childhood, where maybe she didn't have the luxury of being a child. Yeah, right? that's true. So yeah. part of the hero's journey is that, is that we start in this tantruming ch- child state. Mm-hmm. And um, sometimes that's not always the case. I mean, that's, that's a rare exception, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or the other question is, maybe she's not in the same kind of alpha-ness that Byron Katie is. Yeah, maybe it's just a different type. Yeah, that's true. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I don't know. Yeah. I think it's an interesting question. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> it is an interesting question. I don't know that I, yeah, that's, that's a good point. Yeah, we don't really, it's like, what, why do we think, like, why would you call Michelle Obama alpha? I think I do it, I call her alpha because I see her sort of like, I, I see a level of sort of control over her um I, I want to say life but I, I'm not sure that's right it's like herself yeah exactly yeah. exactly and that, that I think that's what I look up to is, is like she has this like you were saying like the the tantruming child versus the adult like the adult who takes responsibility and is able to sort of like I like looked and tried to find a tantruming child moment of her and it yeah couldn't find anything yeah, yeah exactly so it's this sort of it's a person who takes ownership with of their of their life yeah yeah where yeah that sense of responsibility that i might not be responsible for what happened i am responsible for how i react to what yeah. happened and yeah what and, f- and fully responsible and sort of i'll say like runs towards that responsibility if you will not like dragged into responsibility you know i mean because there's times like that where i'm like well i'm responsible for this so i guess i'll do it <laughs> you know or it's <laughs> like you know you're picking me up and bullying me that's that's yeah. different that's a whole different level right yeah yeah i think that's what i'm yeah I, actually that's a really good point um because another person that like we don't talk about but I think is kind of this way is, you know, when I think of like spiritual leaders, like the Dalai Lama, you know, mm. like he's somebody that I probably would call an alpha also. Oh God. Yes. But, but actually I think he did have a discreet moment because I mean, he had to run out of Tibet in the darkness of the night um, to get away from, you know, the Chinese at the time. So yeah. he literally had the departure. He literally had to leave everything, but, um, but it's the way that he has, approached that whole situation and and the grace with which he's done that and that that's where I was sort of poking at with this idea that alphas are necessarily I mean he is sort of like the leader of that country and everything but like I've met people who have that same level of responsibility like in real life Mm -hmm. and they aren't super famous they aren't Gary Vee they're not making millions of dollars right but they've taken responsibility and they own their life and they approach their life with this sense of grace I think that's that's another aspect to me of what is alpha there's a there's a grace there, you know. I feel like grace has a lot of different connotations. That's true. Uh, yeah. What kind of grace are you talking about? What I'm talking about is, it's like the way they comport themselves in their life. It's it, it is hard to sort of describe sensorily. Although I guess it's good that we're probably going to post this video because it's sort of physical to me. It's like they stand up straighter. They take a full ownership of their life, and it's this like 
it's almost like 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 you can definitely see it they sh- they you can see it in even the movie versions like when luke comes back like the way he carries himself is just with this like responsibility this like yeah. maturity that and that's what i mean he's the yeah. adult in the room exactly yeah 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 and so i've met people i i've known people who and it's and it can be very kind and i guess the reason i call it grace is because it can be very soft and kind too it's not always like I'm the adult in the room and I'm going to take over. Well, like it's not yeah. aggressively. So, well, I, don't and I guess think like, it's it, like yeah. I think yeah. part of what makes it that the, that person is the adult in the room is not because they're asserting that they're adult in the room, like yeah. to go back, like, well, not yeah. go back. We actually haven't brought this up, but game yeah. of Thrones, like oh, yeah. not because a king <laughs> yeah. never has to say that they are a king, you know, like when you compare that, when you compare, I don't know, like Joffrey as a king, like, yes, I'm Mm -hmm. a king. You don't have to assert that I'm the adult in the room. It's that when there is a room full of people and and you walk in for whatever reason, you are the person that everyone in the room knows that you are the one that can be trusted for the responsibility, whatever happens. Yeah. 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 There's grace. Yeah. There's like a, an effect it has on the tribe. Like we, I kind of saw that when we were doing LeBron, like he would come, he would be surrounded by others and the way the tribe reacted to him was different, you know? That's a great point. Yeah. LeBron had that. Uh, I guess in some ways we can call it charisma, but I feel like charisma is more of a like innate je ne sais quoi, whereas this is something that is like built through actual experience and yeah enduring hardship yeah yes yes yeah yeah Yeah. that i experienced something hard i didn't run away i didn't let it break me right yeah that element yeah that's what i've seen and i think maybe that's that's what it is like you know michelle may not have had um maybe she did i don't know but um a singular deathbed moment but rather it's been uh collection of them over and over and over again. And I think um, there was a Q&A when Dave and Shannon talked about this, like depending on your type, you know, like what your demons are, you might be dealing with them all the time. Mm-hmm. And then for other people, the swings will be a lot less often, but they will be huge when they do happen, yeah. right? So yeah. with Byron Katie, the swings were huge when they did happen. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, that's true. Whereas that's a- with Michelle, maybe with her type, it was just like a bunch of little swings. Yeah, which I personally, I'm glad we talked about, I'm glad you brought this up because I find that more inspiring. The people who went through a bunch of little things and have and have grown through that. I find that very inspiring because um, not all of us are going to have a huge moment. You know, like you can't. I think that's rare, actually. Yeah, I think it's rare. Yeah, and and it's like, and you can't. I I actually am a be- of a belief that like you can try to manu. I mean, maybe it's possible to manufacture it to a certain extent, but I think it's really hard to manufacture it, and it doesn't always work. Like like where I'm at right now in my life, I think that would be almost criminal for me to do something like that you know I've got two little kids so for me to be like you know what I want to go on a hero's journey I want deathbed I'm gonna just quit my job (laughs) you know what I'm saying I'm just gonna really get the stakes real and I'm gonna quit my job and I'm just gonna let the house go into foreclosure just so I can have this like true and I mean it would give it to me it would give me true crisis true deathbed but that's 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 insane. Like that, that is not a good move. And but so also I, like, yeah. just because you take those first a, a couple of steps, say yeah. you cross that point of no return, right? You, you fuck yeah. over your life, whatever yeah. it is. That does not mean you're going to go through the hero's journey. It exactly. just means that you fucked over your life. And then maybe a couple steps later, you're going to freak out and try to undo everything. But it doesn't yeah. mean that you're ever going to reach deathbed and go through deathbed. It, which this also brings up a good point that sort of the the um i'll say we got to be careful or maybe david Shannon should be careful i don't know um about relying so much on the hero's journey as like a step-by-step thing because I, I could see people doing that i could see a person hearing about this and saying oh wow okay so this is sort of like the manual to enlightenment if you will i'm just gonna fuck over my life like okay let's just do that and it won't work it's not the same thing <laughs> it's not no it's not i think that's a really good point and it's also yeah. like don't go fucking up your life you're already <laughs> fucking up your life right instead of going and intentionally doing yeah. it look at where yeah. you are 
yeah. stuck and where you are leaving the voids because you are, we all are and right. address those instead right. of intentionally going on this journey. Yeah. And I, cause I think, um, you know, if you look at it from a narrative standpoint, if you'll notice the hero never asks for these things and they are always like really like they're devastating to the hero like they're never like i'm yeah. gonna purposely do this yeah of course uh, you know like luke didn't kill uh, you know uncle owen and aunt Baru. <laughs> like he didn't want them to die so, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah i think yeah. that's a really good point yeah, I could see, I could totally see some, you know, 20, 21 year old kid or something hearing this stuff and being like, oh, that's what I need to do. I'm just going to go ahead and turn and everything over. I guess, admittedly, um, that is kind of what I did when I was 22, but I didn't do it because I was seeking out Hero's Journey. Yeah. I did it because I was seeking out my saviors on crack. Like, so <laughs> I, I bought a one-way flight to Taiwan and, and lived my life there part of it was driven by SEFI, but then mm -hmm. also once I was there and I found myself there, I had to deal with the consequences of those actions. Mm -hmm. Right. And yeah, some good things, some bad things. Yeah. And we have like, I think if we all look back on our lives, we will see the moments of challenge and we've had perhaps not like deathbed in mm -hmm. quite the same way, but when we look at places where we grew and what prompted us to grow, it was the mini hero's journey. It was yeah, exactly. a kind of call to action, a point of no return where we had to deal with the consequences of those that fallout. And either yeah. we dealt with it and came out victorious on the other side, or we did it and it is still a problem today. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That, I think that's another aspect is um, the recurring problems, right? If a, if a problem keeps coming back to you again and again and again, then it, you didn't you didn't actually you didn't deal with it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not actually. I I have a lot. I have some of those too, where it's like, oh, I thought I pretty much got this, and then whoop whoop, there it is again, and there it is again. Yeah. 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 Very much so. Um, any other thoughts on the hero's journey? No, this was a really good talk. Uh, I don't think I have anything else. So um, I kind of want to bring it back to Alphaness. Yeah. Um, so we talked about the hero's journey. Um, are there other ways to be an alpha without some version of the hero's journey, do you think? That's a good question. That is a good question. I'm not, I'm not sure. But I mean, I, I, think, I think you brought up a really good example in Michelle of at least not having sort of the traditional hero's journey, but it is still some version of it, right? Yeah. Um, you know, not the big crisis, like deathbed thing. I mean, maybe, again, maybe she had it. I don't know, but let's just yeah. for, for the sake of conversation, let's just say she didn't. Um, so yeah, but I, I feel like you need some version of it. I don't know. What do you think? I, so in the beginning of us recording this, I don't know. I probably would have had a very different answer, but right now, as we were talking about this, I'm realizing more and more that like, it's a big part of alphaness is, is, um, right. Dealing with your shit, especially your human needs, like whatever yeah. it is for an EP yeah. learning to be okay, feeling controlled right. for, um, you know, an EJ learning to hear their inner uh, voice, inner yeah. voice. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and follow it, you know. And acting from it when yeah. um, sometimes it's against the tribe, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, not just to go against the tribe, but because that is the appropriate thing to do at the time. Anyway, um, yeah. yeah, like those kinds of how can you grow those things? How can you get to that state? Like me as an EP, how do I get to a place where I am at peace with feeling controlled by some abstract NI concept, if not by going through some kind of journey of resistance and then eventual acceptance. Yeah, yeah. And especially the, I, that integration of the darkness, like finally taking that into yourself. Yeah. You know, you, you have to do that. Yeah, no, I, I think so. I, I agree. I'm trying to, as you're, as, you're, as you're describing it, I'm like, what would it be? So for NI, it's being controlled. Uh, for SI... I guess it's also being controlled, but it's more of like, at least when, as I'm, as I've been exploring my, especially masculine SI demon, it's, it's a, 
for me, it's a feeling of like life circumstance can't be changed. And so like, how can I learn to accept that I'm going to have that feeling and still move on through it? You know? Um, yeah. I yeah. think you, you had, you had a wonderful demon dialogue when you talked about that demon SI, yeah. where are you feeling trapped by circumstance? Yeah. And I think for demon SI would be making peace with the fact that sometimes circumstance is going to trap you and sometimes mm -hmm. it's not mm -hmm. and but you you can work through the good and the bad of that you can work through it yeah yeah, yeah. that it's yeah. not a life stopping thing exactly and i need as i'm saying this and like applying it to an i <laughs> like i need to <laughs> accept that there are some abstract concepts that will control me mm -hmm. and it doesn't have to be the end of the world and that that's yeah. okay that that's part of the darkness of ni and i can make right. with that yeah it's that integration of the darkness yeah it's so funny because this is exactly what shannon was telling us in the uh the masculine te <laughs> <Women's laughs> round table. remember she was talking about accepting the darkness yeah um, and i think she was speaking very much from an ej perspective on that you know um on the deciders and so it's a similar kind of thing yeah yeah mm. i wonder okay. so what do you think it would be for for the other temperaments just to kind of because uh, i EJ definitely or, understand ep better than yeah. all the other ones right so well, i can i can speak to ej because i think yeah. i probably get it um because i have a sub temperament of an ej <laughs> yeah and actually the demon dialogue that i recorded yesterday but i haven't posted yet as of this recording was all about this which is the i think it's it's a very similar thing to what you were describing with the controlling in that it's for for the ej and I'm speaking as a mini EJ, so EJs feel free to correct me. Or, <laughs> mini but it's, EJ, I like that. <laughs> yeah. But it's like every time, or a lot of times I'll say, when I'm working from my FI and it's not necessarily in agreement with the tribe, I feel, I feel this like guilt or I feel this like obligation to the tribe. And for me, it's been a matter of accepting that I'm going to feel that way, accepting that negativity that negative feeling taking that on and being like i'm gonna feel that way but it's still okay to act from my fi like once i'm able to connect with what my fi truly wants um it's okay it's like permission i think we've talked about this before yeah also. yeah 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 it's that permission. permission thing but moreover giving myself that permission because i think that the ej naturally wants to ask the tribe for permission tribe please yeah. give me permission to work from my fi and so i think the the discovery or the yeah the darkness or however we want to put it um for the ej is i can give myself permission to act it's from that so, di exactly okay. that di yep okay yep. yeah so, so then for IP. the ip <laughs> <laughs> um uh i don't i i don't know i guess i'm trying to flip that uh, perhaps part of it would be that Um, you can't go at it alone. I, yeah. And, and I think, you know, being married to someone who's likely an, an IP, IP. Yeah. If, if he's not an IP, he's an EP with a side of IP. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I know, so he's actually actively working on this and it is for him, it is also sort of like, we, we, we call it pinging the tribe more, um, in that it's sort of like recognizing that the tribe, the views of the tribe are also valid and that yes. like, and in his case, cause he's TI, it's a lot of like reasons kind of things, but it's like, he will go with what he normally would just kind of want to do and not really check on the tribe. And it, for him, it's about actively like saying, okay, tribe, what is valuable to you or what works for you? I, I think in his case with the demon FE, it's like, what would actually make you happier? Yeah. And what do you value, right? Not just what works for me, but what do you value? And how can I bring that in to what works, to what I've been And then I on? think the darkness of that would then be... You may have to compromise yourself. Yeah, exactly. That uh, what, what it is that works for the tribe or what the tribe values is not what you are working on or what you value. And yeah. that you have to yeah. make peace with that. And that's where the darkness is that sometimes the tribe is right and you're wrong yeah or sometimes you have to compromise yeah i think i've heard compromise. dave even say this compromise your, yourself it feels like it's, i think to the ip it does it feels like a huge like i've heard i've heard my husband say like it's infringing on me 
Like it feels the like- The idea of feeling friction. like I'm compromising myself feels mm-hmm. like death. Yeah. Feels it, yeah. like, like yeah. how could I ever compromise myself? And Yeah. It, it feels like acting out of integrity, like away from integrity. I mean, like you're not being, you're not acting from integrity anymore because you're like, I've given up some piece of me. You know, I know they feel that. I know he feels that way. Yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> Those are his words, it's infringing. Yeah. Infringing, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Compromising so, myself away. That's um, actually when I talk about my, one of my past yeah. relationships, um, one of the reasons why it was so painful for me is because I felt like I compromised myself away yeah. in that relationship. Yeah. And that's like for the, yeah. And then, yeah. Um, yeah. And then IJ. Chaos. Oh, IJ. <laughs> oh, I forgot about the IGs. <laughs> I think it's accepting that sometimes you can't find the answers in your little box. Yeah, 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 I, I think so. I'm thinking back to the Murray Forleo class where, you know, she had like planned and planned and planned and had this whole thing and then like a server crashed or something, you remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, it just wiped out everything because everything was on this one track. It's this one track and she lost that track and everything was gone. Whereas like Dave was like, well, I had, this has happened to him so many times as an IJ that he had like several places or something. He had like a backup of backups some kind. And backups. Yeah. So when the crash happened, it didn't, it didn't ruin him the way it ruined her. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, I think it's, it's being okay. And then starting to think ahead. I mean, cause IJs are great at thinking ahead, especially INJs. My gosh. Well, see, I think that's actually <laughs> doubling down on your, on your. That's true. You're just controlling. Fear. You're still controlling. Right. <laughs> and I think, I think it's accepting that, you know what, sometimes it's going to be chaos and you yeah. just need to yeah. let it go. That's true. Yeah, that's true. Yep. Um, I think. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I think accepting that there is chaos and that that chaos is not going to destroy you. It's not going to envelop you and that there's actually beauty in some of that chaos. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Being okay with it and letting it be. Yeah. Yep. Man, those human needs are so powerful. I can understand why Dave and Shannon always just come back to the human needs, human needs, human needs. They do. I really should watch some Tony Robbins. (laughs) Yeah, I watched a little bit of him the other day. Yeah, I get get a little bit back into that. I used to, I used to listen to his talks and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, so <sighs> okay. I've got to get going. But do we have any other things? I think we've talked it. There, there's one question I wanted to ask. Okay, if, if time allows. Okay, let's try. Um, is alphaness even the goal, and why? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> do you have any thoughts uh, on that? Uh, I kind of think it is the goal. I kind of yeah. do. Uh, and the reason why, and I, I don't know, I don't know if it's everybody's goal. I guess maybe I'm speaking from my own FI, but like, I know I personally feel like, I, I feel like that it would be a good thing to be able to have that level of responsibility for everything that happens to me. I think now I'm going to, I'm, I'm being, I'm thinking of uh, Buddhism and like in Buddhism, there's a lot of like, letting go because the whole the whole thing within buddhism is that our suffering is caused by our attachments to things you know Mm -hmm. whether it's a feeling or whatever or material things whatever and so like the goal is to be able to let go of that attachment and to me that that is akin there there's something in common between being able to let go of that attachment and being alpha like the the only way you can truly do that Mm -hmm. is if you've taken a level of responsibility for your life right and you're able to say like i can let that go i can you know and so to me they are kind of linked and so yeah i I feel like it's a goal i think it's a good way to get there yeah i think that is i'm actually really really glad you brought that up that idea of um letting go of attachments and and that like that buddhist practice Mm -hmm. um because when you do look at the hero's journey and at deathbed what is it that allows for deathbed and what is it that allows you to get through to the other side of deathbed is letting go of your fears exactly and making peace with the fact that your fears like like may envelop you may not but that you you'll get through to the other side and letting go of all of that (laughs) i'm still thinking of the spider (laughs) verse because that's what he had to do that's exactly what he had to do. okay i'm gonna go see that movie okay it's a beautiful movie it's totally yeah. worth it yeah you mentioned I to just, me how it was a really great nesi movie uh, for for me yeah I, and unfortunately like one of the things that sorry side tangent here but like i think for the seni 
users. I think spoilers are, are really problematic for you. I don't know. I, I, maybe uh, we should talk about that another time. But, huh. but yeah. And so like, I'm trying not to, but like, they don't yeah. bother me. Like you could tell me the whole, you could tell me all the details of a movie and I wouldn't care. I'd still go watch it. Cause like the way my SI works is I like just the little scenes and stuff like that. And so it doesn't really, I don't need the through line anyway. Oh, that's so interesting. That's an interesting, okay. You're right. That is totally tangential. That's fascinating because you yeah, loathe spoilers. Right. That's why I'm trying really hard because I know, but let's just, uh, you're going to have to go watch it right after. This. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to have to watch it for sure. <laughs> but he, um, that's kind of the thing is like, yeah, it's this like leap of faith of like, he had to let go of fear. I don't think that's a huge, huge, I mean, it's Spider-Man. You know what Spider-Man does. He has to jump off buildings, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's what he does. And how do you do that? How do you do that when you're afraid? How do you take a leap off of top, like a high, high building? Even though you're Spider-Man, you've got a web slinger. That's scary stuff. Yeah, yeah, of so, course. Yeah, the way to get through deathbed is you need to let go of even that fear. And so the fear oftentimes is, in a, in a, is an attachment to the way things used to be. Yes. That's what it's driven by. That is, so, like, yeah. You got to let that go. I love how this brings around our like mindfulness episode. And oh, yeah. Full, full circle. Oh, yeah. I, I love it. <laughs> yeah. um, so, I mean, yes, in terms of the question, is oftenness even the goal? I think, I think for me, definitely. And I think for um, all of us that are drawn by, to OPS, like, why are we drawn to it? Part of it is for that self growth, right? Right. And so, right. what is the purpose of that self growth? Is, is, yeah, like, yeah, I guess to become an adult. Ask yourself that question. Like, yeah, dear listener, why why is that self growth important to you? Why do you want to be responsible? Or maybe you don't want to be responsible. But if you don't want to be responsible, what does self growth then mean for you? Yeah, I think um, I think for me and the kinds of people I enjoy having in my life, I think alphaness is definitely the end goal. But I can understand how it's not, and I don't think can be for everyone. Mm-hmm. If that makes yeah. sense, or maybe it can. Yeah. But I guess I, you I have to have a towns, a little, you know, your townsfolk to begin the hero's journey. If they got to be there. Alpha there. <laughs> yeah, that's true. A town of alphas. I don't know though. I mean, I bet like, like you could see, I could, I could see, um, and I, and I have seen this with people who have like, they are living the life they want, and maybe that is a townsfolk domestic life like yeah maybe yeah. that life is just you know taking care of the kids cleaning the house you know your everyday you know everyday living uh, I think that could be a form of alphaness so you could have a little town that's got a lot of these these alphas but their alphaness is just in doing the time I mean I okay I'm about to go on another <laughs> go for I'll try it, not it. to go down too far but I mean I feel like I feel like part of like modern society that is difficult is that we don't have like clear roles anymore. And I think like in, in ancient times from sort of a tribal perspective, people had a role, you know? And I think, I think that is a form of alpha is like taking on your role and your responsibility within the tribe. And it was, if it was your role and responsibility within the tribe to be a farmer, then damn it, you're going to be a great farmer and you're going to great and you're going to grow food and you're going to provide for your tribe. Or, you know, if it's your role and responsibility to go be a hunter, go do that and you you know and yeah. i think i think they used to have we used to have that like humans used to have that and now that we don't that's why we need these these like rubrics and these things to like i don't know yeah. what, you know and i think bringing it back around to stakes like you know before the stakes were higher they were like you know yeah. if you didn't take care of things then you know maybe sickness or death or Mm -hmm. real pain was an option. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas now, like with how comfortable we are, a lot of those stakes are just so much lower. Yeah. And um, it's like, you know, we can't artificially raise the stakes. Like we can't actually put death on as an option. And hopefully that's not an option. Yes. yes, (laughs) Um, But we can, we can mentally raise those stakes in terms of like removing failures or removing like no quitting is not an option you know just when you remove that from your mind entirely right right yep yeah good anyway um okay i have no other thoughts any closing thoughts no no this is a good discussion i actually feel like i've like my 
my understandings have like gone up and stuff. Yes, me too. And I, <laughs> I feel like I've learned a lot from just talking this through. So that's actually good. In, in preparation for this one, I was watching the Heroes Journey series, which when it was coming out, I actually didn't watch because I've never been a fan of Heroes Journey. I was just like, oh, me too. Um, <laughs> me too. So I had to watch it to prepare for this also. <laughs> yes. Uh, the eighth video, the one when he's talking about when Neo dies in his deathbed. And I was just sitting there watching that, that video in particular, which I think was extra powerful because it was primed by the seven leading up to it. Because as I was going through hero's journey, I was like thinking through my own head, like, well, what's my hero's journey and blah, 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 all that stuff. So when we went through and got to the deathbed and especially I was thinking in terms of NI and how my relationship to NI and like better understanding that it just hit me very powerfully in a way that hero's journey has never hit me before. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I hear you. And then for me, it had this like lasting effect, like watch, going through that whole series. And I kind of binged it, which uh, maybe you did too. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Know. Right before this. <laughs> <laughs> and so like, well, for me, it was a, like a week or so ago, but it, it like, I kept thinking about it. Like it stuck with me stuck. too. Yeah. And then I started as I'm watching other things. And, and so like, yeah, it's like, now it's everywhere. I saw, yeah. So like when I was watching Into the Spider-Verse, I'm like, oh, I see what this is. I see what we're doing here. <laughs> But it was still a totally amazing movie. Like I still yeah. loved it, and I still was crying in tears. And I, I mean, obviously, I bought it and I have seen it like <laughs> like three times in the past. Okay, I'm watching it today. <laughs> yeah, oh, I'm afraid you're gonna be like, this isn't that great, Evelyn. No, I doubt it. It's getting good reviews, so it's not just me. It's the tribe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm allowed to think this because my exactly. tribe thinks this. Right, I'm allowed. <laughs> I'm allowed to enjoy this because the tribe said. It that exactly. it was enjoyable. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It worked for the trap. <laughs> yep. Anyway. Okay. Well, dear listener, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, do you want to share your thoughts? What do you think about Alphaness? And what do you think about the hero's journey? Do you think the hero's journey is kind of like all weird and like, why are you guys even talking about this? Or have you found value in this? Because I'll be honest, I used to think it was kind of weird and I was tired of David Shannon talking about it. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. I wasn't sure what they were getting at, but yeah, no, it helps. Yeah. Yeah. So we'd love to hear your thoughts. Um, If you want to share them, you can do so on the objectively typed subreddit. We'll include a link in the show notes. There we also post about our upcoming episode topics if you want to type along with us. So thank you for listening to Objectively Typed with Versavia. And Evelyn. Until next time. Bye. Bye. And scene. scene.